Hey guys, and welcome back to Doom Builder. <coughs> <coughs> I'll apologise now for the cloak throwing, the throat clearing, and my mispronounced words because I am quite tired. The throat clearing, for some reason, I just <coughs> have a build up in my throat and I'm getting it checked out. Anyway, irrelevant. Um, today I'm going to be covering um, the making the creation of swinging doors which is quite an interesting thing to have in your doom maps it's quite fun so what I'm gonna do here is just create a short fat factor see what I mean sector I'm tired and here I'm just gonna make a little corridor that's 128 by 256 the size of the map but then I'm actually gonna double the size to 256 Right, that's fine. So it's literally just a square. I might make it a rectangle. So I'll insert just a little section at the end here. This is completely irrelevant. You don't need to do it at all. But anyway, our door is going to be here. And it's not going to be a door that's as big as the sector is. Uh, I'm just doing all the splitting up. Because it helps me figure out where the doors are going to be which also will suggest to you that there are going to be two swinging doors but we'll start with one for now now what we need to do here is actually create a dummy sector it's big enough to fit both the doors in size doesn't really matter but you know now I'm actually going to make the door half the size of the full door size and just make one of them here. Now I'm going to select the sector in sector mode and just delete it. That's it. Gone. Bye. Don't know why I've got that. Now go into line mode. Uh, I'll just drag this over a bit. And now what that has done has it has um, made the inside hollow and just sort of forced it to have walls. So we'll give it a texture of big door 2 and so I'm going to have door tracks and then on this side I'm going to have door stop now the process of this is quite simple on this line the line on the edge and now it doesn't matter which of these lines you put it on whether it's one or two um, I'm just going to put it on one for now um, just type 1 here and that sets the start line the poly object number is going to be 1 for our door and that's it, that's all we do for that line and now we select these two lines and thank you phone um, we're going to select these two lines, go to poly objects because I don't actually know the <laughs> number code for this and go to door swing it turns out a 7 set this to 1 set the speed to whatever you want, I'm going to leave it on fast and this turns counterclockwise so it's going to open in sort of that way so say the doors here it will open like that for those of you who don't know that most of you should um, and the movement angle should be 65 now that is important it should mostly always be 65 I haven't yet seen a case where it's not um, and this obviously is player presses use so that the player can activate it to open the door. Now we're going to get the thing tool out by hitting T um, and head on down to Zedium down here and just set a poly object, poly object anchor. Now the angle, and this is important, has to be a 1, the same as the poly object. So I've made it instead of the tag linking to the poly object, the angle links it to the poly object. Now the next important thing cons um, concerning the angle and the poly object number is the start spot, which has also to be, which has to also be set to the angle of one. And as you can now see, the anchor has been anchored to the start spot for the door. So if I just quickly go to the center of the map here and throw in a player start, um, and just hit F9 and jump right into it. Now as you can see there's a gap so the door's unnecessary, I can just walk right around it. But if you do want to use the door, press C, door swings open. 
this wing is closed again. And now when the door closes, remember to make it repeatable action, seriously. And <laughs> go to bed on time. Because it sucks for getting to do these really, really petty, minuscule things. So we're going to jump back into the game. So as I was saying, if I stand in front of where the door's going to close, it will bounce off of me and knock me back slightly. And if I move out of the way, it will just close normally again. The door has to actually touch you for it to bounce back, so if it doesn't touch you and you move out of the way just before it touches you, it will still close normally. Now there's another thing that I wanted to show you, but first I'm going to just throw in the second door, which you can literally just copy and paste, because we're computer designers, well, as far <laughs> as that statement can go, we're developers and we're lazy. We'd like to take necessary shortcuts, ones that aren't going to just like jeopardize the entire project because I have done that before and it sucks. Now the poly object of this second door needs to be two, so we're going to change the angle of this to two, which we've already done. I'm an idiot. I'm so forgetful. And now we want to take. I'm just going to copy and paste this over here clear that and set this angle to 2. So you've got a start spot and another anchor. And now we have two doors. Now if you have a crosshair like me, if you like using crosshairs, or if you're just really really good at guessing where the exact middle of the door is without the crosshair, if you're able to get it exactly in the middle you can actually open both the doors at once but it's pretty difficult and they both <laughs> open at different angles. And they still clip through the walls but it's not as bad when you make them thinner, it's not as noticeable. But um, the other thing that I wanted to show was, and I thought this was a pretty cool um, aspect, that's, it's, n it's not useful, but at the same time it is. If you put an obstacle, say like a burning barrel, behind the door, when you open it, it will hit the burning barrel and get stuck, and it will stay like that, and it won't actually, cl it won't actually close, so it will just stay open. So you can sort of act like a broken door, once you use it once it just opens and stays broken like that. Which I liked, I used that in one of my hexen maps, in fact my only hexen map so far. And I thought it was a pretty cool aspect, but you do bounce off the door because it's still trying to open. It doesn't register this as like the player's entity, so it doesn't recognise it like that. And... That is how you make swinging doors, both double and single. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I am going to be uploading another one today, and that's literally probably just going to be a sp sped up um, version of me working on my map with some chill ass rock in the background. <laughs> I hope you guys found this video useful. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.